hi guys you are watching channel mr electron and today in this video what i have for you is this really old motherboard with a pentium 3 processor it's from 2010 okay so let's get started with this cpu fan because my plan is to remove its driving circuit and then do some rewinding on its armature so as to find out if we can run this motor or this fan directly on AC supply without any circuit. Please note that this video is more of an educational or research type and not a DIY type. So make your conclusions accordingly. With that being said, let's get started. So guys, now I'm going to test this fan with this power supply. At present, it's set to 12.6 volts, okay? So the good thing is that yes, it's working. Let's increase the input voltage. So that's the maximum voltage, 24 volts, although this fan is just 12 volts. Still I'm running it at 24 volts. Now guys, let's measure the winding thickness, previous winding, which was this one. And here we have 0.07 mm. And in place of that, I'm going to use this wire. It's a little thicker. Let's show you the size. 0.41 mm, almost six times more thicker. So guys, here I've provided 20 turns for each pole. Now guys, I have this habit of testing my projects before sharing it with you guys. So behind the scenes, the armature got damaged after working for some time. And for that reason, 
I took another bigger CPU fan so that I get more space for the armature slot winding. So I broke off its driver circuit, removed its initial winding and then rewound it with the same size of wire but this time the turns are 70 per pole. And here as you can see only two wires coming out uh, because for the other poles I have provided the tappings. So let's try it on AC supply 12 volts. And guys for this experiment I am not going to use the tapping points only the end points these two wires. And you see this marker slot it's gonna go like this and we have our fan. Now guys this is our 220 volts to 12 volts transformer and that's our 220 volts home socket supply as you can see 246 volts and now that I've connected the transformer in between the output voltage as measured here is around 12 volts AC Okay, so turning on the supply, let's see if it runs or not. Now it's not starting. On close up, we can see that there is a lot of vibration. Now I'm going to explain it to you with the help of this diagram. Hey, did you know that your most valuable details like your bank account information, passwords for online activity, emails are all at a great risk because hackers are targeting your internet activity with an exposed IP. So don't wait. Choose the best NordVPN service now. Please note that huge discount is available. Both link and your coupon code are available in the description. So grab it now. This middle thing that you see is the armature which is this one four poles and four poles here and this ring that you see that represents magnetic ring which is here in this fan in this ring you see it's sticking so what happens is when we give 12 volts AC supply to the end wires of the winding because of the AC input voltage these poles start changing like initially if it was north south north and south it is going to change from north to south here similarly north here and then south here north here and this process is going to continue as long as the armature is getting its power from the AC supply. Now this is electromagnet so the polarity can change infinitely but this piece the magnetic ring it's permanent magnet. Let's say that this side is north constant north okay this is south this one is also south and this one is north. At the first cycle when it is the top for the AC input. At the first cycle, let's say this electromagnetic pole is south as written over here and this one becomes north, this south and this is north. So when the electromagnetic poles are compared to the permanent magnetic poles, south is facing north of the permanent magnet, north is facing south of the permanent magnet and so for the rest of the poles. Because of which this armature locks the permanent magnet to itself and there is no motion of the fan at all. But as soon as we go to the negative cycle, this north will remain north, south, north, south because it is permanent magnet and the position also did not change. But this south is going to become north because of the changing sine wave. We are in the negative cycle, this cycle. So I've cut off the south. It is going to become north once again. This south, north and this one south. So this time if you will note that north is facing north, south, south, north, north and south is facing south so every pole on the permanent magnet and the electromagnet is going to repel each other because of which this permanent magnet is going to try and start to move and relocate its position from this place like this is north so this north is going to try and come to this place or this place because here we can find 
south and opposite polarities attract so north is going to either try to come over here or try to come over here because at these points it is finding the south pole but as soon as it tries to rotate the polarity is going to change because the cycle is going to move from the negative again to the positive and this north will again go to south and this is going to become north this south and this north so then it is going to think that why move because i have south over here the field is changing at such a high speed because of the ac changing poles that it is going to vibrate at one point but if the changing frequency was very small or very less like uh, maybe two changes in one second then there could have been a possibility that this uh, magnetic ring got logged with the armature poles there would have been a possibility but at present the frequency is 50 hertz from our home socket supply so it just can't catch up and hence the vibration now guys let's turn it on once again and this time i'm going to push it close to the synchronous speed you see and now it is working on its own because the poles of the permanent magnet have been synchronized with the electromagnetic poles and uh, like even if i try to stop it now it is synced so now it is working like a synchronous motor. I'm trying to stop it, but still, yeah, if I push it too hard, the transformer is not powerful enough. Yeah. See, no circuit at all and it is running. But yes, still, this is just for research. It is not practical because we cannot do this all the time. Now let's turn it off. Now guys, I'm going to show you a magic. This time I'm going to connect it to a power supply and I'm not going to push it, but still it is going to start. Okay, so starting it. So the poles are synchronized and it's running. No circuit, only winding. And I'm going to increase the speed. So now I'm going to give you a close up on that. As I said on the diagram that it can get to any direction it wants. Let's try and make it to clock. Yeah, and we have clockwise direction. So guys, let me know in the comment section how I started it without pushing it. Let's see who is the first person to give the correct answer. And I'm going to share this trick with you in my next upcoming video. Thank you so much for watching it. Bye-bye.